Hi everybody! It's Make It Month 6 and this month we're going to be looking at the Jewelers Rolling Mill and all the different things that you can use it for but we're primarily going to be focusing on how to impart more intricate textures onto your metal using a rolling mill like this little piece. A few more samples. So, so far in the project we looked at using hammers and stamps to impart texture whereas this month the textures that you can achieve are much more intricate, much more delicate. Um, and we'll also just talk about the rolling mill's normal function, which is for changing the thickness of metal, or changing the shape of it. Um, which is especially good if anyone's working at home, um, using silver in particular, or gold, and you want to keep all your scraps, melt it down, and roll it out to fresh sheet. So we'll have a little look at that as well. So this is my rolling mill. It's a Durston, which is the brand name, mini mill, because um, it's really small. Although I'm sure to some of you it doesn't look that small, um, but as rolling mills go, this is one of the smallest ones that you can get because, as you can see, I don't have a huge amount of space in my workshop. It's less than eight foot square, so nice little mini mill. Um, these ones are about five, six hundred pounds, but you can buy budget models for less than 200, so about 150, 180 pounds maybe. The budget ones are okay, I'll show you mine later, um, but they're nowhere near as strong as these, so you really, really do have to look after them. The parts on them, like this, can become a little bit loose, and if you put pressure on it when it's loose, the rolls can crack. That's why next door I've got my old budget mill um, and it's got different rollers in it. It's got rollers for doing just wire um, because I managed to crack the smooth ones um, and that was it was because it was being used where I teach my group workshops and students hadn't realised um, that things kept coming loose and they kept forcing things through it and eventually because everything was slightly loose and misaligned it just cracked. Whereas this machine is much 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 more rigid, you can be way more brutal with it, it doesn't need the same amount of maintenance, um, but obviously it comes at a premium. So, but most rolling mills are the same in that you have two steel rollers, um, and this is where we're going to roll our metal through, and in the case of today, it's to impart textures. Traditionally, rolling mills are used for changing the thickness of your metal or changing the thickness or shape of wire. So this one would be for making D-shaped wire, this one would be for making sort of round or square wire and this is flat section rollers. And you can get different rollers as well, so you can get texture plate ones, ones like the one next door where it's all wire but it's got a much bigger selection. And also most rolling mills are considerably bigger than this, like I say, but the problem with the big ones is they weigh an absolute ton. This is very heavy as it is, but it's light enough that I can clamp it onto my workbench. Whereas with the heavier ones, they need to have their own metal stand. Um, and then they often sit in the middle of the room, which I just don't have room for. Um, so this is perfect for me, but it just means I can never work on anything that's really, really chunky because the rollers aren't big enough and aren't wide enough to open that far. The way you use a rolling mill to create texture is by taking your metal and then taking some sort of material that you wish to use to impart the texture. So here we have some sequin waste and this is how it came out in the metal. So as you can see the holes in the sequin waste are round. This is literally what gets left over when they're making sequins. You can find it in craft shops, pound shops. Um, whereas this is all wobbly and sort of wobbly ovals and the reason for that is the way you get the texture is by imparting pressure as you roll it through the mill. So if you imagine if you're basically squeezing your metal through those two rollers nice and tight the metal is going to get longer, it may twist very slightly, you may get a slight curve to it and the tighter it is the longer and more likely it is to twist so therefore the more your shape is going to distort. I quite like these little samples. So these little textures were made by rolling a skeleton leaf through the rolling mill. Skeleton leaves are leaves where all the soft, squidgy organic material has been dissolved. 
from them and you're just left with the skeleton. You normally find them in, again, craft shops, card making shops. Super, super thin, super delicate. Very, very delicate. But strong enough to mark and leave an impression on your metal. Riding your metals soft enough. So if you remember back to earlier in the project, we were talking about annealing, where you soften the metal and how metal can work harden and become really hard and rigid. The more you bend or twist or roll it or hammer it. So you need to make sure your metal is not rock solid before you do this and that it's nice and soft. Skeleton leaves are really popular. You can get them in different sizes. The colour doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. It's to do with how well defined the little veins are in the leaves. You want them to be nice and defined. And you can also use real leaves. So if you just get a leaf out the garden, it's probably going to be far too soft, far too squidgy, full of chloroform still. And if you put it through the roller, it's just going to squidge everywhere. And that could also mean that your rollers end up getting rusty because that um, inside the leaves is wet. Whereas if you get leaves that have been pressed for card making, so again, you can get these sometimes in craft shops, you can buy them online, eBay, places like this. They've been dried out a little bit, so they're still sort of nice and flexible but there's none of that wet organic material left in them and they can give a really nice imprint even though again they are super 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 thin and delicate. Netting and lace both work well so there's some of the netting and this isn't the lace but it was sort of similar this was like a raffeta sort of type of ribbon but these work really well and as a general rule synthetic is much better than um, natural fibers because the synthetic is nice and thin and crisp and defined Whereas natural fibre lace, cotton lace, um, tends to have really soft squidgy bits to it. So that means that it doesn't leave quite as good a texture as something that's nice and thin and defined like this. You can also create nice textures with steel wire, such as binding wire, which you can shape into words or shapes or coils, whatever you want to do. Or this one was paper clips. Um, little cogs but it's really really important if you use something for example steel that's as hard or harder than the rollers you need to use something to protect the rollers so that this doesn't mark an imprint into these as well as your metal so I'll show you lots of different things um, that you can use and lastly this little one says all the world so um, a student used the binding wire to form the words because you can make some nice joined up handwriting but it's also my dirty mind test because some people see something much ruder than the words all the world. You can also get beautiful textures just with paper. So these ones, these little swirly ones and butterflies were done with cupcake wrappers. So you can pick up big packets of these really cheap again in craft shops online. They work really, really well. The only downside is you're limited to whatever designs you can find. The exact same concept, though, is you can buy laser cut papers. So, exactly the same idea, but these come in a whole range of designs and shapes. And you can even send off your own designs and have them laser etched if you want to. Or, like with this one, you can cut your own out of heavyweight paper. So this is a bit of um, watercolour paper because I quite like the texture that it gives. And you can either use a scalpel and a cutting mat or you can use little shape hole punches. 